Well, I'm getting signals up top, so I guess it's time to start. How's everybody this morning? How's everybody feeling this morning? Let's go ahead and do a little song just to loosen things up a little bit. Y'all know this one. Let's do it. Can we do a little song just to loosen stuff up a little bit? Uh, help, me, help, help, help me with this one. Say, oh, man, you find the Lord. Come on, y'all sing it. Tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, put your hands together. Give God a hand praise. Come on, can you get a hallelujah in the house? Uh, come on, turn down for what? Time to turn up. Huh? I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise. I said his praise. His praise. Yes. Shall continually. spirit now hallelujah hallelujah y'all know if you was at a gala or an event the person would be on the microphone i'm seeing you know and it gets you in the mood you know they've been talking about there's drinks in the back and they would telling you about there's a raffle tickets for sale and there's all kinds of stuff now come, how come we can't come into the church and have a holy ghost party huh how come we can't sit there and have a good time with the with our with our father in the house of the lord and there's nothing wrong with having a good time there's nothing wrong with, because when praises go up, well, when praises go up, God shows up. I'm going to change it around for you. When praises go up, yeah, blessings may come down, but when praises go up, God shows up. Mm. See, well, huh? we're not going to praise him for what he can do. We praise him for who he is. Yeah, because he's worthy of the praise. Ah, we got a scripture reading and prayer coming this morning from uh, Sister um, 
Sarabi Anderson and Brother Savio Anderson at this time. Good morning, church family. My name is Savio. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he shall go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. Good morning, church family. My name is Saravi. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for another day. Thank you for family and friends. Please bless everyone in service today and in the world. In your name we pray, amen. 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 That's all right. Give a hand. Give, give a hand to the children this morning. Uh, and the child shall lead them. At this time, we turn it over to Sister Nicole Richardson. Good morning. Let's continue in flow of worship today. We're going to go right into praise and worship. How many of you all know that we have, we serve a mighty God, that he is excellent, that his name is excellent in all the earth, that he set his glory above the heavens and all the earth. He is so mighty that he holds all power in his hands and we're going to praise him today we are going to worship him today and let him know how much we love him how much we thank him how much we are grateful for his grace and for his mercy amen Lord Almighty, 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 Lord Almighty. Oh Lord, how is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above. The heavens and all the earth. When I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, no praise is high enough to express how great you are. Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty. Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty, Lord Almighty. Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens and all the earth. When I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, no praise is high enough to express how great you are. What a mighty God we serve, mighty God we serve, angel. The mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, mighty God we serve, heaven, earth, adore, the mighty God we serve, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
our glory, our honor, our praise, our praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Our glory, our honor, our praise, our praise. What a mighty God we worship our God today we're going to thank him today and as you see I'm alone so if you know this next song I ask that you please join me and sing it because this is one of the songs I just love it is near and dear to my heart because we're going to lift him higher and higher today because as minister reverend Saunders has said when praises go up God shows out and that's what we're going to do today. Hosanna in the highest
praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to bring you this week's announcements as soon as I can find them. Okay. Okay. Women's Day weekend 2024. Ladies, registration is open for Friday to Sunday, September 6, 7, and 8 of 2024. There's a $30 registration fee. You can pay online or make a payment by cash or check in the Sunday offering collection. Prayerfully, you will, re you will attend and bring a friend. Please do not let the $30 registration fee stop you from coming. See Cappy, Sister Cappy or Sister Tammy for further details. Sisters of Siloam 2025 Women's Retreat, Perfecting Obedience. And that is happening on March 28th to the 30th of 2025 at the Black Rock Retreat Center. It is $350 per person, $75 deposit to reserve your room, and it is due on August 31st. The balance will be due on, on January 31st, 2025. The, meal, the fee includes your room, meals, and materials. Ladies, mark your calendars and plan to join us. Registration is open. Limited rooms, so make your deposit to reserve your place. You will be glad you did. It is always a spiritual and exciting time when we get together on the mountain. Mid-year ministry reports are due immediately. Please turn them in to the secretary's office or send them via email to info at siloambc.org. Noonday Bible study is canceled for the rest of August. We will resume on September 4th. There are veggies downstairs. Please go downstairs and help yourself after the morning service. And I hope I'm getting this one right. Women's Day Choir is tomorrow at 7 o'clock. So ladies, if you want to come and join us for our Women's Day program and our Women's Day Choir, we ask that you please come out and lend us your beautiful voices tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And this concludes our announcements. And now we're going to have our offering appeal. As soon as I find that. Uh, where is it? We were going to have our offering appeal by Brother J.R. Milligan and Brother Jordan Milligan. Good morning, church family. My name is R.J. Milligan, and today I will be reading a verse in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And it states, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Hebrews. Chapter 13, verse 16. And do not forget to do good and to share with others for such sacrifices God is pleased.
of getting low before the Father. And I know we've got accustomed to church as usual where you just sing the song and then you sit down and you move on. But if there are anybody in the room who know what it means to worship God in spirit and in truth, then you know it's not just about a song, but it's about a heart-to-heart -heart connection. My heart connecting with God's heart for me to worship Him. And so when I say unto him that I exalt him, I'm not giving him lip service, but I'm talking to him from my heart. That God, we exalt you. That God, we worship you. And it is our desire that it would be a sweet sound unto our Father. So I just wanna encourage you to be people who worship God in spirit and in truth, giving glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm excited to be in the house. Who's excited to be in the house of God today? And I just wanna honor our sister, Nicole Richardson, amen. Didn't she lead us to the throne of glory? I don't know about y'all, but I could tell she got a relationship with Jesus outside of these walls. And that's what it's all about. It's about us building and cultivating our relationships. So I bless you in Jesus' name. As you can see, Pastor Randy is not here with us today, but I just ask that you just continue to keep him in prayer as he's dealing with a family emergency. We bless God for him and for his family. And we know that God is a healing, protecting, and covering God. So we know that God has it all in his hands. Today is our Youth Sunday, so we bless God for all of our youth who are serving and have already served today. 
Amen. Amen. Um, today we have a guest preacher in the house. And I am excited to have the opportunity to introduce you to him. Uh, Minister Kevin, Kevin Davenport, he comes from Victory in Christ Christian Center, where he is a servant leader who ministers the gospel of Jesus Christ. I keep asking him, do you pastor a church? And he says, no, I'm a servant just like you. I said, well. And when we asked him if he has a bio, he said, I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, well. That's what we're going to go with. But uh, for those of you who don't know, he has on many occasions preached at Meals of Hope. And that is a, that's no small feat because the people who come inside to Meals of Hope, they're not always saved. They're not always churched, but they need the word of God. And it takes a special anointing to be able to deliver the word of God to those who don't want to hear it, number one, and to those who need to be saved and those who are unchurched. And I thank God that he has blessed Minister Kevin Davenport with that anointing. But today, I want you to receive him, and we're going to, can we just stand on our feet as he comes and just bless God for the anointing on his life. And we're going to ask him to preach the word. Can we just point our hands toward him and say, preach the word in Jesus' name. Next voice you will hear is his. She is my earthly joy. She is the center of my earthly joy. And without her, I am nothing. So, baby, I thank you and I love you and I appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Mills of Hope. Mills of Hope is something that is real special to me and it is my next favorite ministry after victory in Christ. Sister Tammy worked at the post office and she got blessed, she got out, I'm still there. <laughs> and she asked me for months and months and months, can you come do Mills of Hope? Can you come do Mills of Hope? No, 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 no. We're paying, no, 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 no. So one day she comes to me in the morning. I come in, it's about 4 o'clock, and she says, hey, Kev, come here. And I'm, on, I'm already thinking, no, no, no. <laughs> she says, I need a favor. My speaker backed out today. I could really, okay, Tammy, I got you. I got you. And it turns out that it is a special ministry. You have no idea how God will use you in a place where people does not want to receive God. It is totally different. And I've come to learn through that ministry that you have to meet people where they're at. And that is a special gift in itself because you can't, and we do this, look down at folks. Amen. We, 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 we tend to look down. At, we get delivered and we put on a couple dollars suit and, and everything is okay and we look good and we want to walk around church and just look down at people who ain't dressed the way that we're dressed. So, but it is special because I see them out on the streets and they walk up to me and say, Reverend Kev, can you pray for me? And it's like, okay, cool. You are getting it. So I thank Tammy because because of Tammy, I'm here today because she brought me in the Mills of Hope. And those folks in Mills of Hope, they work so hard. If you don't know the things that they go through, you need to show up on Friday and see what they put into that ministry. 
Every time I'm there, I thank God for them, and I make sure that the people that are there recognize those who show up every Friday and pour into them when they don't want to pour into themselves. Amen? Praise God. If I was to say to y'all, how many of y'all want to go to heaven? What would you do? Really? That's all y'all got? Now, I'm a high energy person, okay? So we're going to do this again. If I was to say to y'all, how many of y'all want to go to heaven? What would you do? Yeah. Amen? If we go over Revelation chapter 21 and we look at verse 3, it says, And I heard a great voice coming out of heaven, saying, Behold. You know, when God get ready to do something, you hear the word behold, that means God get ready to do something special. Okay? So when you're reading your Bible and you see behold, you got to put some emphasis on behold. Y'all know how it is, especially y'all ladies, where y'all will throw y'all head around? You got to put some emphasis on that word, behold. The tabernacle of God is with man, and he, God, shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be their God and be with them. Amen? And then it goes on to say that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Hallelujah. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. Neither should there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen? So we're all in this house today because we're trying to get to heaven. Amen? Amen. All right? Cool? We good? Come on, go me to Revelation chapter 3. Because, see, we got some work we got to do before we can get there. Amen? We, we, we don't like to hear. We got to put in some work. We want God to bless us, and we don't have to do anything. Amen? God, you just got to bless me, and I don't want to do a thing. Your word says that you will never leave me nor forsake me. You ever notice that when you get in trouble, you can remember every promise in the Bible? Amen? You know the promise, but you don't know the condition and what you need to do to receive the promise. Amen? Amen? God said he'll give me the desires of my heart. But the beginning of that says, delight thyself in the Lord. We don't want to do that. We just want the desires of our hearts. I haven't seen name it and claim it in any Bible, but I'm going to touch this car, and I'm going to walk around it seven times, seven times. That's the number of guy, and I'm going to claim this car. You ain't got a job. You can't make a payment, but you want this car, and then when it gets repoed, you mad at God. Well, God, you said that you will give me the desires of my heart. God said, but you know you couldn't afford it when you went and got it. I got that little hoop out there that you need to put a Band-Aid on, and we can just keep rolling in that. Amen? We got a little work to do. Revelation 3 and 15. Here's where it gets personal. Amen? Scripture says, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot. Then it goes to verse 16. It says, so then because you are lukewarm, my sister, lukewarm, but because you are lukewarm, I don't know if you want the word of God. I don't know if you don't want it. I don't know why you're coming to church because you're not interested. I don't know why all of these things are going on. You're just being a distraction in my house because you are lukewarm. This morning you came in and yesterday you walked up to them and you snatched the program out their hand because you had an attitude. So you're coming in my house and you're lukewarm. Amen? It says, I will spew you out of my mouth. Amen? So when you get spewed out of God's mouth, it's sort of like eternal damnation for those of you who don't know. Amen? It is a place you get to when God, we don't understand that God gets tired of a thing. And when God gets tired of things, he puts you in places where it's like, okay, you just not going to make it in. You just not getting there. I don't have to be bothered with you. But we have to stop being lukewarm in the house of God. Amen? We have to stop being lukewarm in our Christian walk. Amen? I, when I go to the store and I see somebody, hey, sister, how you doing? Oh, God bless you. How you been? Two hours over, I was just cussing somebody out. Come on, 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 come on. Come on. Come on. Y'all know how we get. But God says that I got to get you to a place 
to where you're at. Amen? Praise God. Lord, Father God, I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to stand before your people, Father God. I, I ask, Lord, that you rest root and abide within me. I thank you, God, that you gave me Jesus, that he saved my soul one day. I thank you, Lord, that you have anointed me with the Holy Spirit, Father God, and I ask right now that it rests root and abides within me, Father God. I ask that it falls fresh on everyone in this sanctuary. Father God, I'm asking you to do the supernatural thing in here today. I'm asking, Lord, that somebody that will receive your word, Father God, because they now understand that their eyes are now open, Father God, that this is not a game. Touch us, Lord, in Jesus' name. We give thanks and we pray. And all the men and women of God say amen. 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 Children, I don't want to forget you all. It's a good job. The word of God does say train a child in a way to go. And when he's old, he will not depart. And I like to look at the adults and say, when I was a child, I understood as a child. I reasoned as a child. I spoke as a child. I like to add some things into that one. I act like a child. But when I became a man of God, I put away childish things. So we have to grow up. And we have to keep these children encouraged. Because if we let them out on the streets, the streets will raise them. The rap music will raise them. The drug dealers will have them. So we have to keep a hand on our children. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God says, I know your works. I know your works. And we come back with, but God knows my heart. I always say that's a dangerous thing because we often don't know our own hearts. We take God and... After church is over, we're going to go back home and we're going to put that Bible down right in that same spot around the dust that it was in before we picked it up this morning. Uh, you, you know how it is. We picked up the Bible this morning. <laughs> Had to wipe it off so nobody know that it sat there all week long. God says that I know your works. You're neither cold nor you're hot. You are one way with this group of people, but you're another way with another group of people and it's not right. I need you to be who you are in me or who you are in the world. I, I, God says, I, I don't care who, where you're at. Just be where you're going to be. I, you're leading people astray. You're leading people to hell. You're leading people down the path to damnation because you're lukewarm. I just need you to be hot or cold. Either you're for me or you're against me. That's what God is saying. Either you're for me or you're against me. Stop showing up in church disrupting my services every Sunday morning. You come in and you come in with an attitude. How many of you know that when that person unlocks the door in the morning, as soon as the crack is in, Satan comes in the door. Satan's the first person in every church in the world. Satan is the first person in the door. I'm not saying it's the person that opens the door. Don't get me wrong. I don't want... He called me the devil. No, that's not what I'm doing. Satan slithers in. So sometimes before you sit down beside somebody, you got to look and say, do I really want to sit here? <laughs> do I really want to sit here? Because folk want to distract you. You know how you sitting next to somebody and they having a whole conversation with you while pastor trying to preach? Amen? Come on, y'all. It ain't just me. It ain't just me. They're having a whole conversation. You look around, and the poop is fun because we get to see this all the time. They making grocery lists. They looking on their phones like they looking up scriptures, and they looking at YouTube or TikTok. And it ain't, it ain't spiritual. It ain't biblical. And all of these distractions are going on in the house of God. Amen? Because they don't want you to be saved. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seateth in the seat of the scornful, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, because his delight is what? In the law of the Lord. They don't want you to have, you know, misery loves company. Y'all know that? Misery loves company. If I'm not happy, if God's not blessing me, you can't get yours. Amen? Somebody come on, give God some praise for that one. See? 
if, if, if I'm not getting mine, you can't get yours. I don't care how much work you're putting in and God is blessing you, I'm going to sit here on Sunday and make your day miserable. You know, God said that he's going to give me the desires of my heart. I ain't got them yet. But I look at you. You used to have that little old raggedy car. Now you got a new car. You done fixed your house up. You don't make as much money as I do. But God is blessing you. I'm going to sit here today and I'm just going to talk to you and tell you why God should not bless you. He should bless me. Y'all don't get that? Y'all don't get that? Mm, okay, I'm going to move on. We have to know who we are in God. Amen? We have to know who we are in God. We can either be warm, nor hot, I mean, nor cold. We have to be hot. We have to be on fire for God. Amen? My sister prayed this morning, and then the scripture came out. It says that God is a spirit, and I got it too. That, that was the, God was good with that. John chapter 4 said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now is the time that God is looking for such worshipers, amen? He don't want you to worship the thing. He wants you to worship him. God is looking for real worshipers, amen? <laughs> the time is at hand. We are in the last and evil days. We've been saying it for decades and all of that, dear. But let's look around and see what's going on in the world. Uh, there are no longer rumors of wars. There are wars. Amen. There are wars in our cities and towns all over the United States of America. Our young kids are killing each other and going crazy. It is a war. Amen. So we have to be ready. So we got to know who we are. Come on and go with me to uh, Peter, First Peter. We got to have an identity in Christ. Amen. If you don't know your identity, you can't get into heaven. Woo, come on. Talk to me. If you don't know who you are in Christ, number one, you don't know where you're going. Number two, you don't know who you are. I have no identity in Christ. My relationship is lukewarm. I, when I need him, I'll pull him off the shelf. When I need him, I'll ask him for something. I'm not asking him to bless me. I'm just asking him to give it to me. Get here, God. Get here. I need mine. But we have to take our time and go to God in prayer. The prayers of a fervent man availeth what? Much. A righteous man availeth much. Excuse me. We have to go to God in prayer. We have to go to him in honesty. We have to go to him in sincerity. We just can't show up and pick God up and put him down whenever we get ready. Amen? Amen. Praise God. This is what God wants you to be. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. This is your identity. This is part of your identity. Amen. God says that you are a chosen generation. Amen. So in other words, before the world was formed, you were chosen. This very moment when God was creating the world and putting everything into place, he knew today that you would be here. You were chosen and destined to be sitting in your seat right now. You were chosen and destined to be in a relationship with God right now. No matter how hard times get, God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Why? Because you are chosen. We can't forget that we're chosen. We can't forget that we're chosen. God, God reached down in the dirt, and he created man. And he blew into our nostrils the breath of life, and we became living souls. Amen? Some translations got living beings. Ah, that don't do it for me. We became living souls. Okay? So we were chosen. Everyone in this room has been chosen. Everyone in this sanctuary has been chosen. Everyone who is in Christ has been chosen. You were chosen by God. Amen? You got to start claiming being chosen by God. You got to start claiming God. And you got to start walking in it like you really believe it. Some of us, I don't call them Christians. I call them church folks. And I'm going to go here. Some of us don't want to walk in what God has promised us. That's why we don't have it. We don't have it. We can quote every scripture in the book. 
every scripture in the book, but we don't possess what God promised because we won't walk in it. We don't believe it. Amen. He said, you are a chosen generation. Here go the good part. You're a royal priesthood. <laughs> You're a royal priesthood. I got royalty in my blood. My royalty, my blood comes from Christ Jesus. I got royalty. I am royal because Christ is royal. He has made me royal. He's that adored me to, uh, 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 he has blessed me to be royal. Yeah. Amen. I am royal. I am royalty. Yeah, right. Amen. How many of y'all know you're royalty? How many of you say, I am royal? I got this precious blood flowing through my veins. Woo! And we peculiar. <laughs> World can't understand us. <laughs> we get to jumping around and shouting and praising God and holler hallelujah and be laid out in the spirit and all. I mean, what is wrong with them fools? We peculiar. We're God's people. We're peculiar. Amen. You ever been walking down the street and just start praising God as you walk in? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, you've been so good to me today. I, I, I don't have a reason, Lord, just because you woke me up this morning. I'm blessed. I Just because, Lord, I, I got a couple dollars in my pocket. I'm blessed. I didn't have enough money to get everything I needed out the grocery store, but we're going to eat tonight. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. I'm blessed. I'm peculiar. I've been set aside. I've been sanctified. I've been chosen. I am God's own. Amen? Somebody come on and talk to me and give God some praise right now. Whew, thank you, Jesus. I got to tell y'all something. I got to share a little story with y'all. I woke up this morning. I was so jittery and nervous. I was walking around the house. I told my wife, I said, my heart right here, go ahead, come down my chest, my head hurt. She said, you just nervous, you need to go to the doctor. I'm just nervous, baby, it's okay. Don't worry about it, God got you. He said that you shall show forth the praise of him, God, who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I, I've been in some dark places in my life. I've been, as, that's why it's so easy to do Mills of Hope. I, I, I've been Mills of Hope. I, that's why it's so easy. I've been in some dark places in my life. I come through some things that God has brought me through. It's easy to talk to folks and tell folks what I go through and what I've been through so that they can be encouraged. I got to talk about God. I got to give him praise because he has brought me out of darkness, and I'm walking in this marvelous light. We all got a story that we can tell, amen? I'm not the only one in here that has been through darkness. Your darkness may be different than mine. Your darkness may be different than hers, but we've all been been through some darkness, and God has delivered us. Amen? <laughs> Trust in the Lord and lean not into thy own understanding. Trust in the Lord and lean not into thy own understanding. Trust in the Lord and lean not into thy own understanding. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you know who you are. Trust in the Lord and lean not into thy own understanding. God has called you out of a dark place. God has brought you through some things. And that dark place could be sickness. That dark place could have been cancer. That dark place could have been amputee or diabetes that was so bad. God has called you out of a dark place into that marvelous light. God has touched you and healed you. Amen. And now you are able to stand there and claim the healing of the Lord that it is on your side. And today, who is on Team Jesus? Amen. We all got to be on that team because God has done some supernatural things in our lives. Amen. A couple of months ago, my wife and I were getting ready for church. And I just finished shaving my head. Can't do it till Sunday morning. Shaving my head and shaving my face. And my wife was getting out the shower and I was getting ready to get in. And as I got ready to get in the shower, I couldn't pick my leg up over the tub to get in the shower. So I said, baby, I need you to help me get in the shower. 
So she helped me get in the shower when she went downstairs, and she does her thing in the morning. And I come downstairs, and I said, something's not right. We got to go to the emergency room. We got to go. Something's not right. I don't feel right. And when I say I got to go to the hospital, my wife don't waste no time because he gone. And we went, and they thought I had a stroke. Just had a real bad migraine. Still having them, but life goes on. And my calcium count was real high. When you have a high calcium count, the first thing they look for is cancer. Yeah. They keep doing blood work, and they keep doing blood work, and they keep doing blood work. And now I'm getting MRIs and CT scans and all of these things, and all of a sudden I can't breathe. I'm just laying there, and I'm trying to breathe, 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 and I, and I can't breathe. And it got real crazy. And then the Lord just spoke to me and said, peace. We got to trust God in those moments. We got to trust God in those moments. It's still going on. I'm still going through it. I'm still getting tests. But I ain't worried. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. God is looking for worshipers right now, today. God is saying, worship me. God is saying, praise me. I got something for you. I need you to come close to me. I made you royal. I made you holy. I granted you peace. I brought you through the storm. I don't know here what you were going through. When you called on me, I was right there. My word told you that I will never leave you nor forsake you, but you got to be in me for those things to take place. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But God needs you to know. God needs you to know that it's okay. He got you. Amen. Trust God. 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 Verse 10 says, which in times past, you were not a people. But now, you are the people of God. See, it, 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 it's, it's, it's funny how, stand up for a minute, my sister. It's funny how God can put somebody in your life when you're going through something, and their presence, their presence just gives you a sense of peace because you know it's a man or woman of God. And more importantly, you know that they went through the same thing that you're going through. And you know that God has delivered them. That's important. We sit on testimonies all the time. We... We're too proud to tell folks what we've been through. <laughs> we're, you sit down. we're too proud to tell folks what we've been through. We're too proud to tell. I was broke one time. I, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. <laughs> I started my job back in 1902. I was making five cents. we too proud. I was hooked on drugs. We don't want to tell folks those stories. But when we share those stories, we bring people out because they come to God because they see the God in you. They see that God has delivered you. They see that you had that royal blood. Amen? But now are the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. God has mercy on you. God favors you. The favor of God is upon your life. Old soul, and it says that anchored in the Lord, though the storms keep on raging in my life. I can't sing, bro. I'm going to talk about this, okay? Mm -mm. I make a joyful noise. That's what I do. I'll be joyful when I make a noise. <laughs> though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes I can't tell the night from day, but still that hope that lies within 
is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shores that I know he'll lead me safely to. We just got to keep our eye on God. Amen? Who are you in Christ? What has Christ delivered you from? Talk about it to somebody sometime. Stop being proud. Stop. You know, when you stand before Jesus and he said, I got this one thing against you. Y'all know that scripture, right? I got this one charge against you. Y'all know that scripture, right? Amen. You didn't tell that young man that you used to get high when he needed to hear it. You didn't tell them some of the things that you was doing when you was young that they needed to hear it. And that's going to keep you out of heaven. That one little thing that you didn't want to share because you was proud. 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 Amen? Who are you in Christ? What does God call you? I actually send out scriptures every morning, and I send out what I call a morning greeting. It's a banner. And it says good morning and whatever it does, and this one's coming up this week. It says, my identity in Christ Jesus, and it goes from A to Z. Accepted in the beloved, blessed with all spiritual blessings, chosen in him before the foundations of the world, delivered from the powers of darkness, elevated into heavenly places, forgiven of all of my sins. I am God's masterpiece. I am healed by Jesus' stripes. I am in Christ Jesus. I am justified by faith. I am kept by the power of God. I am loved unconditionally. I am more than a conqueror. I am not condemned. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Overcoming the world through faith, I am predestined to be a sonship. In other words, I am predestined in God because he had predestined me, he had ordained me, he has kept me, and I'm going up yonder one day, and I'm going to walk around heaven all day long. Hallelujah. We got to understand and speak about who we are. Amen. I am quickened together with Christ. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise to praise his holy name unto his glory, victorious through him, washed from my sins by his own blood. Woo! I am washed from my sins by Christ's own blood. I have been crucified with Christ. I am yoked together with a whole bunch of believers. Hallelujah. And I am zealous of good works. You got to know your identity in Christ so you know where you're going. You just can't be walking around blind, bumping your head on things because you're going to slip on that banana peel and end up in hell. How many of y'all are the Lord? How many of y'all are the Lord? Come on, make some noise, make some noise, make some noise, make some noise, make some noise. How many of y'all love the Lord? I did a prayer breakfast downstairs a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, and it was called an eternal timeshare. And the road to that timeshare came out of John 3, 16. See, when we're talking to people about being delivered and destination, God made it real simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whoever believeth in him should be saved. God made it real simple. It's not hard. This walk of Christianity is not hard. We just have to be faithful to the cause. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet and give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 There's somebody here going through something. You know who you are. God is saying, pray. God is saying, seek my face where it may be found. Call on me while I am near. You know who you are. Old song says, just have a little talk with Jesus. That's all you got to do. 
He's waiting for you. He already knows what you're going through. But he wants you to come talk to him about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. If there's one in here who was not saved, can I? Who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Who is not a part of the holy nation? Who is not a part of the royal priesthood? God is saying, Come. My grace is sufficient. My blood is pure. I died for you even before I formed the world. God is saying, come. Come. God doesn't want anyone to be left out. Not everybody's going to heaven. Don't get that wrong. I, some folks just ain't going to make it because they don't want to. But we still have a chance today. Mother Robinson always says that you got up this morning, you put your shoes on, but you don't know who's going to take them off tonight. You put your own clothes on this morning. You were able to go to the bathroom by yourself. You were able to feed yourself. But that can all change in the twinkling of an eye. We have to make sure to make a conscious decision to accept Christ while we can. Amen. Praise God. The clock says it's uh, 1244. So as I say downstairs, if Jesus comes at 1245, we all going to heaven, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There may be one who doesn't have a church home. You've accepted the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. And you're looking for a place to be taught of the Lord. This is a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church. And so if there's one, we invite you now to come. The doors of the church are open. We bless God for his mercy and his grace. Can we bless God and give a hand clap for the word of God? I can tell you this, that God is putting us in a season right now where he is provoking us to change. And it's not just so that we can do his work, because it is for that, but it's not just for that. The Bible says that he corrects those whom he loves. And because he loves us, it is his desire for us to come into the understanding of his word and to have our lives transformed by his word. So we just bless God for the word of God that has gone forth. We thank you, man of God, for coming and for blessing us. We ask that you just remember all of the announcements. If our hearts and minds are clear, we're gonna go ahead and give the benediction. So if everybody can bow your head and close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this day, for this service. We thank you for the word that has gone forth. We thank you for the power and the clarity that the word came with. And we ask now, God, that you would just touch the hearts of your people, that they would carry the word with them, Lord God, that whether they're hot, cold, or lukewarm, that they would use this word to set a fire deep down in their soul. Yes, yes. That they would be ignited. That they would bubble over with excitement and joy and fervor for your word. That they would saturate themselves in your glory. And that they would seek your face while you may yet be found. God, teach us to trust you. Teach us to love you. And teach us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We bless you for all that you're doing. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. And together we sing amen and amen.